fans of the popular U.S. version of the television show The Office will recognize, of course, the wonderful Kelly Kapoor, played brilliantly by uh, Mindy Kaling on the show, uh, who's a, a fantastic part of the show. And and uh, someone, if you've worked you know, in any respect for any period of time, you can probably relate to having a Kelly in your office. And, you know, I remember in particular the episode where Jim thought uh, that he was really moving up in the world or, or, you know, getting a break by getting to move to the back part of the office to do his desk, got moved to the back part of the office. And he was going to get away from Dwight and all this. And it was just going to be so much quieter. It was just going to be heaven back there, right? Until he realized he was sharing a space with Kelly, who was a chronic oversharer. Right. She was overly involved in other people's lives and specifically overshared about her, her life and just uh, talked all the time. And Jim really came to appreciate where he was at before and not necessarily having that. And despite all the problems he had with Dwight, he didn't have this particular issue because, she, you know, she was really just an oversharer. And I'm sure that at times we've all been in a situation like that where we've been in an office or in a space or in a confined area with an oversharer. And we know that that can be difficult. Right. You know, there's a problem with it too little information, but it can also be a problem with too much information. So uh, organizations and, and uh, public relations efforts in general need to be aware of how they're sharing information. They need to, you don't want to overshare. Of course, you don't want to be a Kelly Kapoor, but you also need to have information out there. People, people need to have access to things and access to information. So with that in mind, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the importance of information kits and how we can go about putting together effective information kits, what they are and what they're used for and, and uh, what should be included in them at a base level. So first of all, what are we talking about here? What's an information kit? An information kit is very simply a collection of resources that explain the core details of an organization, campaign or project to outsiders without having to speak with someone. Now, those, you know, we said outsiders, those outsiders are often journalists who are trying to find, you know, they're working on a story and they want some basic information about an organization. They don't really want to have to go through all the rigmarole of getting somebody on the, on the phone and, and, and trying to track down all this information. But so they just want some quick details and they just want to be able to access that. So you have this information kit oftentimes available now online. Um, it's sometimes called a media kit. They're basically the same thing, but information kits tend to be a little, um, broader and more accessible because those outsiders could also just be people looking up information about your organization, potential employees, uh, investors, uh, just uh, you know, anybody in the, in the world who kind of wants to know a little bit more about your organization could use theoretically that information kit wherever it could be found to do so. So an information kit very simply just puts out there some, some general pieces of information that explain again, the core details of whatever it is, your organization, your campaign, your project, whatever it is, so that they don't have to speak with someone. That's what we're really talking about here. So why should you have an information kit? There are a couple of different reasons. Um, so just real quickly, well, first of all, it gives people a single point of access uh, that they can go to. Again, they don't have to make 17 different phone calls and get pushed around from here or there and don't have to go to all these. They can go to one place and find some basic information, single point of access, right? It provides consistent information. Uh, it should be the same information uh, and it should be updated, of course, but but it's consistent and accurate information. It also provides an organization more control of a narrative. You get to decide what goes into this information kit. So you have more control over how things are framed and what people are accessing. So, um, so that's another reason to have an information kit. Uh, it also makes it convenient for information seekers. They can't, they can't, I can't, uh, overstate the, the importance of having it be really convenient for people. And, and if people are looking for information on your organization. They just, just go to this one place and it's super convenient for them to find just some basic details and, and what they're looking for there. It also though provide, it, it conveys that sense of, of seriousness and professionalism about an organization, organizations that have a really good information kit, information access area, media access area, it really says something about them being put together, that they have their ducks in a row, that they have this, all of this information, not only have it, but they have it here for people to see it's available. It really does convey something about that organization to just say, look, we're serious. This is important to us. And we've, we've taken the time to do this and, and put our energy into doing this. So lots of reasons to have an information kit. Um, if you have any kind of again, organization, a project a campaign, this can be very, very helpful in any of those kinds of situations. All right. What are the core components 
of an information kit. Now we're going to talk about these five things that, would, that should be in every information kit, really, um, no question. And then we're also going to add in some others that may be some extras and things you, you could add in if you, if you found them helpful or think they might be worthwhile. But these five things really should be a part of any uh, information kit, any media kit, any media information access area, whatever it is. So um, first of all, your organizational overview should be there. This is your organizational information the basics about your organization that either uh, if this is for an organization, then just just that. But even if it's for like a specific project or campaign, what organization is behind this? What is, you know, who's responsible for this? This should be part of your uh, information kit. So we're talking here about your background information for the organization or the origin story. If you have a cool origin story that you like to share with people, make that a part of it. You know, get your narrative out there. Tell people who you are. Tell the story of your organization with that background information and that and that uh, origin story there convey your mission your mission should be a part of that organizational uh, overview and you should tell people what it is you're trying to accomplish remember there's a difference between mission and vision mission is who you want to be right now as an organization what you're trying to do right now vision is kind of who you want to be in the future where are you trying to go with all of this if it's different right but it should at very least have your mission in there what are you trying to accomplish right now what are the goals of your organization right now in this moment. You can have the, some biographies of like key leaders and team members, people that, that, that you know, come that make commonly come up in conversation about who, who are the people leading this organization or leading this effort, put a little biography about them. Let, let folks know who's behind this organization, who's, who's running this organization, who's, who's behind this initiative, this campaign. So put some biographies and, and even photographs of, key leaders, team members, people like that in this organizational overview. And then you should also add in some relevant statistics or, or data about the organization. Not only how long have you been here, but how many customers do you serve? What kind of products do you have? Just some basic data and, and information that, can, that journalists or other people just may find interesting or helpful. All of that goes into your organizational information. That should be robust. It should be, it should be simple. It should be well organized, but it should be robust and have people, you know, things. If you get asked these things on a com on a regular basis, if these are common questions that come up about your organization or things you find yourself talking about a lot about the organization or the project or campaign or whatever it is, put it in that organizational overview. Make sure it's there so that people can access it there. Okay. Okay, so we want your organizational overview. That's a really critical part of this. You should also include logos. If you have logos that you want people to use, that you want to make available, again, some people are, are kind of protective over their logos and they, they, they want to keep it proprietary. But first of all, pe people are going to just find it on Google Images anyway. So this is your chance to make sure that they have a good, high quality, high resolution um, logo in whatever sizes you want. What if you have different colors, you can make those available here to just to make sure that people are at least using good ones, right? Good versions. So that they're not just going out on, on, uh, on Google images and getting some really pixelated version or one that's an old logo, an old version or, or in the wrong color or whatever that somebody else has put together. If it's going to be out there anyway, you want to make it a, a high quality version that's available to people and all the different forms and styles and colors that you have um, for that organization, for that campaign, whatever. You can make it easy for people to find those so that at least they're using the correct ones, hopefully. You also want to add in uh, any kind of other media assets that you have that people can use and that you want to make available. Uh, we're talking here about photos, videos, um, GIFs, whatever, a any kind of media asset that would make it easy for a journalist to say, oh, no, that's nice. I got a picture here. I can use this for my article or I can include this with whatever. You want to also include, obviously, um, any credits for those photos that you need to make those available in that area. Make sure that everything there is properly um, attributed and credited to the, the right people. But and, and, and she'd only share stuff that's yours, of course, that you have the you have access to and you have the right to share. You don't want to pull in stuff that's you know copywritten from other places. This is not the place for that, obviously. Uh, again, we're not at Google Images. We're not whatever. We're, you know, we're sharing media assets that we want to make available to journalists and other people that they can use in helping to promote and uh, promote the organization. And, and so if you have any kind of photos, videos, GIFs, whatever assets that they may be able to use, charts, graphs, and those types of things that you've put together. And it's better to make good ones available to other people than have them just kind of pull stuff from wherever and try and fill in the gaps themselves. Uh, you should put product information. Oh, sorry. 
product information in this area. Um, let people know what it is you do. If you if you if you manufacture or have a specific service or product that you that you're selling, make sure that those are laid out here in, in basic um, forms. You could you could put all that in. If you, even if you have prices and you want to do that, that's fine. But tell people what it is. Or if it's a campaign, this is an information uh, kit for a campaign or a project. Then tell people what it is you're doing. Put your put your the core objectives of this campaign and your whatever it is you're trying to accomplish or sell or whatever. Make sure that that's available there so that people know again who you are, what you're doing, and exactly um, what your product or service or campaign objectives are uh, through that project or product information. Then finally, contact information. This one is really important. If they have other questions or if they need to contact somebody, how? Can they do that? What's the best way for them to reach somebody so that they don't have to make 17 phone calls or get transferred 15 times or send an email and never hear back from it? What is some reliable contact information that they can use to uh, to get a hold of somebody if they have follow up questions or need more information about the organization, the campaign, the project, whatever it is? Make that readily available and clearly available in your information kit as well. Now, it doesn't matter if this information kit is uh, like digital, a, a lot of them are anymore. They're websites. And so you have a, a specific page for organizational information or an about page where people can, or even a, you know, a media page where they can come and, and get this information. Uh, but it could be something that's printed as well. Or it could be, you know, that you've printed, you've handed out, you've, you know, that kind of thing, or it could be both. It could be, could come in all kinds of formats, right? Whatever format it's going to be in, it should contain at least these five components, right? Now, there are some other things, as I said, you can add to this to kind of level it up and, and make it even more effective or productive. So if these things make sense for you, they won't for every uh, information kit, for every organization or every project. But if they make sense, there are some additional kind of helpful extras that you can add to this that will, again, help you kind of level up this area, make it even more effective and more beneficial. First of all, spellings and pronunciations are important. Um, and I would include both um, because if you have an organization where the, the name is hard to spell or, or somebody's name is hard to spell, make sure you have an area where you're, you're providing that. Or if it's for media that, and you know, is um, not just uh, written, if it's for television, radio, podcast, anything like that, having pronunciations there is going to be important so people aren't stumbling over it or getting the names wrong or getting the product names wrong. So just provide a really helpful simple spelling and pronunciation cheat for all this stuff. You can include links to all your socials. That's really, that's always a good idea. If you have social media or, or other ways to, to, to direct people toward what you're doing, include those links there as well. You can include any news articles like that have been published elsewhere, or if you have press releases, you can do that as well. Your own, your own releases, but also, you know, if you were, if you got a nice article in the local paper or in a magazine or, you know, on a television show and you have a link to that, include all of that as well and have a section for those types of things. Include a section if you have some for testimonials and case studies. So, you know, clients, customers, uh, whoever talking about how wonderful you are and wonderful your product is and your, your organization is or your campaign is, include those kind of testimonials, any case studies where you can go more in depth and provide examples. Again, if a newspaper or, or a, a television um, program is looking for, okay, what's a real life example that we can use to talk about how, what this looks like in the real world? You can provide that in a case study as well. You can include those in anything to make their jobs easier. Um, is great. So you can include a section on any awards that you've won. And I would always encourage you as well to have an FAQ. Again, what are some common questions that come up about the organization, about the campaign, about the project, whatever it is, answer those questions really simply in an FAQ document or, you know, site that where you just go through the top questions that, that come in. If you find yourself answering these questions a lot, then include an FAQ there. So they have the answers without even having to, to contact you or to talk to you. That's the ideal here. Okay. So these are little helpful extras that you can add in. In addition to those five core components, if these are appropriate, if you have access to them and they're available, I would encourage you to consider whether or not they might help boost or, or level up your information kit as well. Okay. Finally, a couple best practices for uh, putting together and using an information kit. First of all, keep it simple. Uh, make it easy to access, make it easy to find the information, have it well laid out so that um, people can go directly to what they need to, to find um, whatever details it is they, they're trying to find. Uh, just, just keep it really simple. Um, don't try and 
overdo it with an information kit because then it becomes less helpful and less useful. It's certainly important to keep it updated, keep all this information updated and correct, and especially the contact information or any data and product information. You want to keep it updated. If you want this to be useful for people, it needs to um, have the most up-to-date information possible. Keep journalists in mind uh, and keep their needs in mind when you're putting together this information kit. Other people may look at it, you know, regular people just off the street or whatever, or potential employees or whoever, investors, clients may look at it. But the primary purpose here is for journalists a lot of times. So keep their needs in mind when you're sharing this information. What is it that they might need and, and what structure might they need it? And, and just, you know, I can making it easier on them makes it more likely that your organization, your campaign, your, your, that your story is going to be conveyed not only more often, but, but more accurately and, and so forth. So in short, this information kit should be a way for you to share information and to convey um, a, a, this connection or to establish this connection with whoever, with journalists, with clients, with uh, potential customers, with potential employees, with just the general public. Uh, so it's a way for you to connect with them and be open with them about who you are, what you're trying to accomplish, and kind of get them on the same page then. If you have questions about information kits or really media kits and any of those uh, types of things, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that this helps provide you with some understanding of what an information kit is, what it's used for, and in so, in so much as what uh, your organization or your campaign should include in theirs and how they might be able to use this to uh, achieve the objectives of that organization or that campaign.